Welcome back to PSC's Tech Byte. Today I'm really happy and proud to introduce you to the new PMP Core SDK library. The PMP Core SDK library is a library for SharePoint Online and Microsoft 365 developers, which support .NET Standard 2.0 and .NET 5. It is a cross-platform library, so you can use it in Windows, Linux, and macOS. And it has been built with Microsoft Graph in mind. In fact, the first choice of the library is always to use Microsoft Graph for you or to fall back on the SharePoint Online REST APIs whenever we need to do something which is not yet available in Microsoft Graph. Uh, ideally, as a developer, you can simply rely on the PMP Core SDK library. And under the cover, the PMP Core SDK library will make the right choice for you whether using Microsoft Graph as the first choice or the SharePoint REST API if it is really needed. From a targeting point of view, with the core SDK, we target SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams nowadays. From an architectural point of view, the PMP core SDK has been built with a modern architecture based on dependency injection, asynchronous code, uh, fluent APIs, and the availability of a, a link language integrated query provider uh, built internally of the library to query uh, the domain model of the library itself. It is based on a community effort, so it is under the umbrella of the Max365 PMP community project, and it is open source indeed. So you can find on this slide the URL of the GitHub repo where you can find both the source code and the documentation of the uh, library. Last but not least, it is the successor of PMP Sitecore, and on a long term, it will also be the successor of the PMP Framework Library. So, let me move to the demo environment, and let me show you how to start working and playing with the PMP Core SDK Library. So, let's start playing with the PMP Core SDK within a fresh new console application for .NET Core, which I just created. First of all, I want to make uh, the console application asynchronous, so I will convert the main method to an async method and the return value will be a task instead of void. Then uh, we can go to dependencies and we can manage the new get packages. And here we can add uh, the uh, PMP core SDK package. Actually, I'm going uh, to add the pmp.core.out uh, package because this one is the one including as a dependency the actual PMP core SDK component and this one provides all the authentication logic. In fact, from an architectural point of view, the authentication logic of the PMP core SDK is based on an open interface which has been implemented in this additional package if you want to use the one that we provide out of the box. But it is up to you to build your own authentication logic if you like. So, let me install this package. It will take a while and I will get PMP Core SDK as well as the PMP Core SDK authentication library. Moreover, we need to add another package, which is the Microsoft extension hosting one, because we want to use dependency injection and the hosting model inside our console application. So, let me install this one as well, accept. And here we are ready to uh, develop uh, our solution. So now I can start uh, creating my host uh, through a host builder. So I can simply replace the console write line uh, with the create default bot, uh, default builder method of the host uh, type. And in order to do that, I need some usings in my code. So let me do that. Here we can add the using of the dependency injection and of the hosting. Through the uh, Fluent API of the uh, Microsoft extension hosting, we can easily configure, for example, the logging of our solution. So here I can say that I want to configure logging in the event source logger and in the console. And I want to configure a set of services with dependency injection. So inside uh, this configure services method, we can easily define uh, the uh, dependency injection services that we want to use from a PMP core SDK point of view. So, for example, we can add to the collection of services the PMP uh, core service as well as 
DPMP core authentication service, which will provide respectively the basic uh, infrastructure of PMP core and the authentication uh, extensions of uh, PMP core. We can also configure these services with uh, some external configuration based on a JSON file. So we can add the configure method call providing the PMP core options uh, to this uh, configure method, reading from the JSON configuration file in a section called PMP core. And we can do the same for the authentication model. So here we can say uh, configure PMP core authentication options uh, and still reading the configuration from PMP core, which means that in our application, we can add a new file, which will be a JSON file. So let me search for JSON here, and we can add this one, the app settings JSON file to our uh, sample solution. This will be a file that we want to copy to the output uh, in order to have it available in our solution. And just for the sake of simplicity, let me copy an already uh, defined one and let me comment it out. While well, we have a PMP core section, we have a bunch of settings which are uh, uh, optional, so not mandatory, but I want to show you what you can configure in PMP core SDK. So you have options to configure the behavior while consuming SharePoint REST, options while consuming Mixograph, how to behave in the context, and as you can see, the default behavior is to have graph as the first choice and to support the beta endpoint if needed. We can even force to use always the beta endpoint if you like. Then we can define a section of credentials, and this one is the one provided to the authentication component of PMP Core. And here I'm configuring the credential manager authentication with the credential manager item called PSS that power, which is the one I'm using in my tenant. And I'm also providing a client ID and the tenant ID of an application that I already registered in my tenant. If you don't want to use this one, you can even completely remove it and you can rely on an already pre-registered application that we register with PMP PowerShell if you use it and that you can reuse right here. So uh, I can also configure what the target sites are. And here I have a site, which is this one under my tenant, uh, which I will access with the credential manager authentication that I configured just uh, here. So once I've done that, I can save my file and I can proceed uh, defining my uh, host. So I can, for example, say that before closing uh, this uh, uh, fluent syntax, I want to use the console lifetime and I want to build my host. Once I've done that, I can actually start the host. So host.startasync. And then I can create a scope in which I will use my host and the services provided in my host to use the PMP Core SDK. So the idea of the PMP Core SDK is to work with a set of PMP context objects. So using a PMP context factory service that we have, and I need to add a using for this interface, we can use the PMP context factory to create a new context, a new PMP context for a target site or team or Microsoft 365 group. So it is an I disposable object. I can do using var context as like as we are used to do when we use CISOM and asynchronously we can await for the PMP context, PMP context factory object, and we can create asynchronously a new context for either the ID of a group in Microsoft 365, the name of a configuration, the URL of a site, so up to you. Here I want to target my demo site, the one that I configured here in the collection of sites in the settings file. So let's do that. And inside this using block, I can play with the PMP context object that I've just got through the PMP context factory. How can we use it? Well, we can do stuff like, for example, we can say, okay, let's declare a web variable and let's use the context asynchronously to get the web object under the cover of the site in which I am. So for which I have the PMP context, I can get asynchronously the web object and for example, using some Lambda expressions, I can load some of the properties of my site, like the title, like, oops, sorry, like, for example, the uh, collection of lists that I have in my site, 
and for example, again, just for the sake of completeness, I want to get the master URL of my site. By invoking this method, which is an asynchronous one, as you can see, we will simply trigger the request to download from either Microsoft or the REST API of SharePoint these properties of the current web object. And here, because we are accessing the master URL, we are going through the REST APIs of SharePoint Online because the master URL is not available in Microsoft But you don't need to think about that. You simply declare what you want to have and the PMP or Core SDK will do uh, the request, the right request for you uh, under the cover. And we can show, easily show in the output of the console uh, the information about uh, our uh, site. We can also do more. We can play, for example, with the team which is backing our modern team site that we uh, are consuming through the demo site configuration. So context.team instead of web, get a sync, and we get a team object that we can use. And again, here we get it with the default properties because we don't specify any specific property here. And we can still show in the console window as the output a list of properties of the uh, currently uh, retrieved team object. But as I said, we can also play with language integrated query. So we can do stuff like, for example, making a link query against the collection of lists in the web object. In order to do that, we need to add some additional usings. And specifically, let me go at the top of this file, and we need to add the using for these namespaces of PMP uh, core SDK, as well as for language integrated query. And once we have done that, we can easily define a language integrated query uh, here to get from the collection of lists just the ID, the title, and the description of every list. And we want to order all of the lists by title descending, and we want to get the lists as the output. This will be just a link query, so we will not execute the actual request under the cover, but we will uh, do the actual query when we will say, for example, to list or to array targeting this iQueryable object. So here we can see the output in the console window again, and whenever we will resolve this query into an actual collection of items, we, we will re-execute the query onto the target environment. So now I have defined my sample solution. Let me build. It is building. I can run the solution and show you how it behaves. So let me put some breakpoint here, for example, one here, one here, and one here, and let me start the application. It will be a console application, as I said, so here is the console window, and now we will be able to see in the debugger that we have access to the web object, to the team object, and to the collection of lists ordered by uh, title descending. Here we are, the application is running. It is consuming uh, the settings that we defined and pretty soon we will see the breakpoint triggered. And here we are. Here we have the request for the web object. Let me continue. And here we have the web object retrieved. And we can see through the debugger that we have some properties which have been downloaded and some others which are not available. If I go to my console application, we can see the title, the number of lists, and the master page URL. I can continue the execution, and we can now see the properties of the team backing the website. And you see that in the first scenario, we made a REST request to the REST APIs of SharePoint, while in the second scenario, we used Microsoft Graph, because in order to access Teams, we need to use the Microsoft Graph APIs. And then we can make a link query. Let me put a breakpoint here as well. Let me continue again. And here you can see we have done another request, which will be the request to retrieve all of the lists uh, and uh, the items uh, of the collection of lists. And here we can see the list ordered descending by title of all of the lists that I have in my target site. So simple as that. You use dependency injection, you create the PMP context factory, you create a context and you use it. Of course, you are not always forced to use the dependence injection, but it is the modern approach that we suggest you to use together with the asynchronous programming model. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.